Welcome to the first installment of Domain 1 of the 2024 edition of my Security Plus Exam Cram series. Now 1.1 focuses on security controls, which has proven to be a challenging topic for many. So for the exam, you'll need to be familiar with the four categories of security controls, the six types of security controls. You'll need to be ready with examples of each of those types, at which point you'll realize that every security control typically aligns to multiple types, which is really a problem for folks on exam day. And in this video, I absolutely will cover the four categories and the six types, and we'll cover many examples. But more importantly, I'm going to show you how to identify the primary function of any security control for any scenario you might encounter on exam day. So you give me 15 minutes and I will show you the path to mastering security controls for game day. So let's get started. Welcome or welcome back to my Security Plus Exam Cram Series 2024 edition. So today we're focused on Domain 1, but more specifically Section 1.1 of Domain 1 for the SY0701 version of the exam. As with previous versions, I will cover the entire syllabus line by line, but we will start at the beginning, which is Domain 1, General Security Concepts, and we'll go line by line end to end through the syllabus. So section 1.1 focuses on comparing and contrasting the various types of security controls. So this is a fairly short but very important section. So we'll start with the categories which include technical, managerial, operational, and physical. Now what's different here versus past versions of the exam and other exams out there is the inclusion of the operational category really just a more granular way of considering the control types which have not changed. They are preventive, deterrent, detective, corrective, compensating, and directive. I'll give you two bits of advice for exam day. Number one, you should know some examples of each for the exam. I'll help there. And know that controls can fit into multiple types based on the context of the situation. I see folks get wound up on this fact as they're working through their practice exams in their exam prep. I'll take you through a logical way to think about this to ensure you can get the right answer on control-related questions on exam day. So we'll start with categories of security controls. We have technical controls. These are hardware or software mechanisms used to manage access to resources and systems and to provide protection for those resources and systems. Next, we have physical. These are security mechanisms focused on providing protection to the facility and real-world objects. Then we have managerial, which are the policies and procedures, administrative controls really, defined by an organization's security policy. So managerial controls use planning and assessment methods to review the organization's ability to reduce and manage risk. And then we have that operational category, which helps to ensure that the day-to-day -day operations of an organization comply with their overall security, primarily implemented and executed by people instead of systems. I think of operational as people enforcing the managerial controls, supporting physical security, and using the technology we've implemented through technical controls to ensure that we comply with our overall security strategy. Let me give you some examples here. We'll start with technical. We have encryption, smart cards, passwords, biometrics, access control lists, firewalls, routers, intrusion detection and prevention. Again, it's the technology. Next, we have the physical. Guards, fences, lights, motion detectors, dogs, cameras, alarms, locks. Protecting what we can touch. Next, we have managerial. Policies and procedures, hiring practices, background checks, data classification, security training, risk assessments, vulnerability assessments. But the focus here is all of these practices laid out in policies and procedures the organization follows. And then we have the operational category, which would include things like conducting the awareness training, configuration management, media protection, the doing. 
So to summarize those a couple of different ways, we have technical, which is the implementation of the hardware and software technology. The physical controls, which are tangible, touchable. Managerial controls, which are really policy and procedure based, the processes documented. And then the operational, people doing stuff. So to visualize these categories, we have our assets, the focus of our protection. And we have our managerial, technical, and physical controls, if we're looking at this historically. The policies, which give us guidance on the what. The technical controls, we're implementing the hardware and the software to help with the how. And then a layer of physical security around our facilities, devices, and other assets. It's important to remember there is no security without physical security. If I can get into your facility, get into your data center, get into your wiring closet, there is no technical control that can then stop me. There is no managerial policy that's going to prevent me from doing damage as an attacker. Now let's insert that operational layer, people-centric activities, conducting the awareness training, ensuring the backups have completed, making sure the media is stored appropriately so we can use it for recovery when necessary, implementing the managerial policies, supporting the technology and the physical. And while these categories are important, it's really the types of controls that are going to come up in questions on the exam. But before we dive into control types, I want to sink on the definition of a security control. Security controls are security measures for countering and minimizing loss or unavailability of services or apps due to vulnerabilities. You'll often hear the terms safeguards and countermeasures used interchangeably. But to put a finer point on it, safeguards are proactive controls. They reduce the likelihood of occurrence. And countermeasures are reactive. They reduce impact after occurrence of the security event. Now let's dive into control types. We have the deterrent control, which is deployed to discourage violation of security policies. Preventive controls deployed to thwart or stop unwanted or unauthorized activity from occurring. Detective controls deployed to discover or detect unwanted or unauthorized activity. Compensating controls, which provide options to other existing controls to aid in enforcement of security policies. They're supporting or redundant controls. Next, we have corrective controls, which modify the environment to return systems to normal after an unwanted or unauthorized activity has occurred. And... Directive, which direct, confine, or control the actions of subjects to force or encourage compliance with our security policies. And you'll notice I've highlighted the key descriptors of each type along the way here that you'll want to remember for the exam. Now let's look at some examples of control types together. We have preventive controls deployed to stop unwanted activity, and examples here include fences, locks, biometrics, alarm systems, data classification, penetration testing, access control, all of which can prevent unwanted behavior. Next, we have deterrent controls deployed to discourage violation of security policies. This control picks up where prevention leaves off. Our examples here, locks, fences, security badges, guards, lighting, cameras, alarms, separation of duty, security policies, and security awareness training. Do you notice the overlap in control types here? The fact of the matter is, every security control is generally going to fall into one control category, but will map to multiple control types. And that lock, while preventive, is also a deterrent. It is a psychological barrier. Locks create a visible and tangible barrier, even if the lock is unlocked. If I have a padlock that's even unlocked and hanging there on a gate, that sends a signal that not just anybody should be walking through there. And it also conveys increased perceived effort when it is locked. It makes the would-be trespasser think twice. But stick with me and I'll show you how to navigate the overlap on the exam here in a moment. Okay, next, we have detective controls deployed to discover. These include security guards, dogs, motion detectors, job rotation, mandatory vacation, audit trails, intrusion detection. These all allow us to detect or discover unwanted activity. Directive, which direct, confine, or control actions. Policies and procedures, standards, guidelines, 
physical signage, directing behavior, verbal instructions, contracts and agreements, all intended to direct or encourage a specific behavior. Corrective controls, which restore systems to normal. Backups and restores, patching, antivirus or anti-malware. Forensic analysis, disciplinary action. All play a direct or indirect role in returning our systems and environment back to normal. And finally, compensating controls, which provide options to existing controls to aid in enforcement and supporting our security policy. They are additional backup supporting controls. These could include security policies, personnel supervision, monitoring, work task procedures. And when I say security policies, that could be anything from segregation of duties to dual control, mandatory vacations, background checks. All right, so it's time to address the overlap we see here in type. So we have one control that maps to multiple types or functions. And you saw it in those previous examples. A single security control can be identified as multiple types depending on the context of the situation. And that is just a fact of life. Security controls are designed to work together and their functions often overlap. For example, a security camera system is both deterrent, it deters unwanted entry, and detective. It records potential security incidents for later review if, as a deterrent, it doesn't do its job successfully. So context matters. The classification of a control can depend on how it's implemented and the specific risk it's addressing. So a context-based example. We have an access control list that can be primarily preventive if it blocks unauthorized access, or detective if it mainly logs access in a scenario for later investigation. Perhaps the access control list showed that an individual should be granted access to the file repository, but they then deleted sensitive data that shouldn't have been deleted. Well, at that point, the activity was logged and can be investigated later. So when we take this knowledge to the exam, it comes down to the language. Exams often use specific words or phrases to hint at a control type. So let's look at some keywords for each of the six types that you can use to reason your way to the right answer on an exam. Words like warning, assign, visibility, perception. These indicate a deterrent control. Preventative, access control, authentication, firewall, encryption. These all prevent access. These are preventive in nature. We have policy, procedure, standard, guideline, all designed to direct good behavior. So they are directive. Monitoring, auditing, logging, alerting, all designed to detect behavior. So that's a detective control. Backup, restore, incident response, patching, all correcting negative conditions. A sure sign of a corrective control. An alternative, backup, redundancy, supporting, all signs of a compensating control. So keep this information in mind and I think security control related questions on the exam should be quite easy for you to get through successfully. Congratulations, my friends, you've reached the end of section 1.1 for the Security Plus exam. Expect 1.2 to be out in the next couple of days. And I hope you like this bite-sized release approach I'm taking for the 701 version of the Security Plus exam. You'll still get your complete course, but you'll be able to consume in bite-sized chunks as we go along over the next few weeks. And as always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Find me directly on LinkedIn. And until next time, take care and stay safe.